I'm uh, Brenda Baptiste. I'm the chair of Indigenous Tourism BC, and I'm really excited uh, that you're joining us for our first ever virtual workshop celebrating National Indigenous History Month. And we acknowledge that uh, Indigenous people are the traditional guardians of this land that we live in and that we all live in. I'm, I'd like to acknowledge where I'm speaking from in the Silks Territory in the beautiful sunny Okanagan, although I was complaining that we had some Vancouver rain this morning. <laughs> Lots of lightning. Um, yeah, it's been kind of crazy, but that's, I mean, that's just the beauty of nature. And so it's, uh, it makes me grateful that I'm actually inside as opposed to being outside. I want to acknowledge all of you and where you're from um, and, and for you taking the time to join us and just celebrate a bit of our Indigenous culture and you know as Indigenous people we are, are part of our, our values and principles are around hosting and hosting also includes not only sharing our culture and our values and principles but also our food and uh, some of the beautiful products that we make, including the bannock that you'll, you'll see today and then the wine that uh, for the wine tasting. So I hope that you're all ready for a great afternoon. If you, have, um, if you haven't already, I'd really encourage you to sign up for the June 17th workshop on arts and culture and then the June 22nd workshop on wellness and uh, just come and explore the, just the amazing richness of Indigenous culture in all of those areas. I'd also like to acknowledge Destination BC as being a partner with us on, on this and in so many ways. I mean, Destination BC has been our partner since ITBC began over 20 years ago and has continually worked with us to uh, build Indigenous tourism to what it is today and I, as our partners, they are part of our family and I want to acknowledge Maya Lang, Vice President of the Global Marketing of Destination BC as, as being our, my co-host today and to uh, just say the work that uh, Destination BC and that Maya and her team does really encapsulates the importance of those partnerships that we continue to have and that you don't grow in isolation and that being able to tell the story of British Columbia uh, with the indigenous voice just makes it that much richer and a much more beautiful place to live and work and visit. And that's that's really what's been the foundation of our partnership. Plus the fact our two organizations share the same values and principles in terms of taking care of our visitors, but also taking care of each other and, and this beautiful province as well. So with that, Maya. Thank you so much, Brenda. I'm. Uh beyond honored uh, to be here and to be co-hosting with you uh, these, uh, this series today. Uh, I am joining you today from the territory of the Coast Salish people in North Vancouver, uh, specifically the Squamish, Musqueam and tsleil nations. And I um, am honored to be able to live, work and raise my family on uh, these territories. Uh, Brenda, you know, I, I just so appreciate uh, what you said about our partnership. I know we at Destination BC are, I speak for all of us when I say that we are just so honored um, to be able to work together with you and with such a fantastic team that does such great work um, to celebrate uh, the culture um, of Indigenous peoples around British Columbia. So thank you for inviting me to join you today. And I have to say, I'm super excited because I tried Mr. Bannock's food truck um, last Friday. I've been seeing the truck. I drive by it on a regular basis. It's parked. And finally, I got the, I downloaded the app. It's a fantastic app. You can order products online. I ordered my, I ordered my tacos and hamburger and had it delivered last Friday and uh, we enjoyed it for dinner. So super excited to, uh, that everyone gets a chance to see Mr. Bannock himself uh, share his his, uh, his cuisine with all of us, and uh, and I have my bottle of wine ready to uh, to see uh, to learn a bit more about the Indigenous World Winery as well. So thank you for having me. Thanks so much. I'm glad that you had a chance to experience the uh, Mr. Baddock's food. I think, um, and now he's going to show you how to make it at home, right? <laughs> so I expect to be invited over to your place for lunch, and and uh, and I think. I think all 400 of us should have that open invitation. <laughs> no pressure, Maya, no pressure. Uh, this afternoon, we are so lucky to have two incredible um, presenters uh, for us. And our first, um, our first, 
presenter is uh, Paul Nutrell, uh, chef and owner of Mr. Bannock. And so it'll allow us to explore the history and cultures of, of Indigenous cuisine and, and later on the wine. Um, for the next 15 minutes, you'll meet Paul, who is a celebrated Indigenous food truck owner, Mr. Bannock, who will be serving up uh, variations of his authentic Bannock. And I want to acknowledge that, Paul, you're from the Squamish Nation, which is a proud, proud, incredible uh, nation within, within uh, that area. And for those of you that purchase Bannock kits, we hope you're following along and cook while you're watching the demos and let us know how it goes and you're done. Kind of, you know, let's just show us what you made. And so with that, uh, Paul, just take it away. Hey, hey, good afternoon, folks. Thanks for tuning in, wherever you're from. I heard we had a large number of people joining today. So today we're doing a live cooking demo featuring the Mr. Bannock, Bannock mix. You can get it from our website, but it's really simple. You just add water. Uh, we're also gonna be showcasing some local farmers. I got some uh, beautiful fresh strawberries I got out in Langley. Langley BC from Coast Farms. And then uh, we got this lovely wine to go with it as well from our partners on the video. And then we're also showcasing Sriracha Revolver and Wabanaki Maple Syrup. So today we're doing a sweet and a savory uh, with the mix. So we'll start. I made about uh, half of the mix earlier. And in one Bannock mix, it's uh, four cups. So just empty all of that, put it to the sides. I got some water here. Just give it a little mix. And then I slowly add about half of it and then give it a mix. You want the, the dough to be kind of sticky and a little bit thicker. Uh, makes a huge difference whether you're frying or you're baking. Uh, just have just test it out and uh, have fun with it. Because so, uh, uh, so Paul, you can fry or bake this. Yes, it's uh, very versatile. Like, I can't wait till everything opens up a bit more. Me and my family usually go uh, camping every year, and we're gonna take a couple of these and. Do some bannock on the fire, bannock on a stick, you know. <laughs> so what Everybody. Is, what's in the bannock kit? Yeah, so the, the mix, so the mix is uh, all-purpose flour, and then there's baking powder, a uh, little bit of salt and sugar. Uh, for people who don't have the bannock mix, the ratio is a cup of flour, a tablespoon of baking powder, and a teaspoon of salt. Wow. And I had a question from someone. Can you make this in an air fryer? I've never done it, but I'm pretty sure you can. It would, uh, I would make it, so I would bring it to this state and then uh, put some flour on the table and then dust it so it's not sticky. You can make it flat and then uh, just throw it in the air fryer there. Oh. So I noticed that you've got the waffle maker there. Is that a traditional way that your grandmother and mom showed you how to cook batter? <laughs> no, that's something I I came up with on like on my own. It was uh, fried bread is always very delicious, but feeding people on the North Shore in the West End, you need a little bit something that's a bit healthier. And who doesn't like waffles, right? <laughs> So I do like four four scoops in there. I add a little bit of oil, flip it over. See the 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 waffle is really nice and hot when I opened it. It's steamed up, so it's good to go. So while you're doing that, um, do you have a lot of childhood memories of uh, your your mom or grandmother or? Cookie. Yeah, for sure. When uh, both my grandmothers helped uh, my mom raise me and my sisters, 
and they both both grandmothers did a different version of Bannock. Uh, the one that we lived with, my late Granny Sally, she actually did a uh, baked Bannock, and my other grandmother did a fried Bannock. I have to tell you, as First Nations Indigenous people, we take Bannock very seriously. And some of the biggest fights in the schoolyard was who made the best Bannock. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, my daughter, uh, so is, uh, is we're not Indigenous, but uh, yes. she's from Kapalan Elementary. And they went to Chickamas, um, to Chickamas last year, the center up in Squamish. And she tried Bannock for the first time and she absolutely loved it. And so now that we've seen Mr. Bannock's food truck and sometimes we see uh, uh, you know, signs up for, for to try Bannock or to buy Bannock. Uh, I know that uh, my daughter is, gets excited every time. So uh, it's it's very delicious and it looks very good. You're getting lots of amazing comments too from people in the chat. <laughs> one of uh, one of my favorite things that that we do the bread on the food truck is our uh, Bannock eclair. So you get the the fluffy fried bread and you put some uh, Nutella. And then you throw some fresh whipped cream in there. It's uh, really delicious. <laughs> all of the all of the kids enjoy that one big time. That sounds amazing. Go. So these ones cook in a little beep, but it's usually like four to five minutes, just depending on what kind of waffle you make, waffle maker you have. This one's a commercial one that I took from my food truck just to do the video for everybody watching. Uh, yeah, so I'm super excited. Yeah, I love fresh berries and we also have some uh, chicken strips here. Oh, wow. Talking about an air fryer, I got the ninja one right here. <laughs> so what made you decide to open your bannock truck? Yeah, well, back in 2009, 2010, I took a culinary program at uh, Vancouver Community College. And uh, it was an Aboriginal specialty program. And like, I knew I wanted to be in the kitchen, but like, there, is, there isn't many places where you can get Indigenous cuisine. Like not even just around the world, right? There's very few places. And I uh, had a lot of great mentors and, and partnerships that, that helped me get to where I am, right? So these kind of dishes are like my version of uh, Indigenous cuisine. So uh, everybody's enjoying it and everybody's liking it. So I must be doing something well. <laughs> and Speaking about your um, your food truck, so I know I've been in North Van, but are you in other locations as well around Metro Vancouver, or you? Uh... Yeah, like uh, pre-COVID, we did tons of events like around the whole Lower Mainland. Uh, we were in Richmond and Surrey. Uh, we were even out in Chilliwack and Abbotsford, uh, downtown. Uh, obviously, the North Shore where I'm from, right? But uh, we're, we have a bunch of work set up to be done on the truck uh, this month. So hoping in July or mid-July, the truck will be mobile again. So we can see everybody around the city once again. <laughs> That's awesome. so we had a good question. So, um, someone asked, how would you describe Bannock to someone who has never tried it? Yeah, so Bannock is like, a, it's a quick bread, like... Like you see what I'm doing here, like it's just the consistency of the dough. This one's a bit more watery, right? Uh, you can make like biscuits, you can make scones, muffins, cakes, uh, even like baked, baked bread as well. So it's just really diverse and you just want to manip manipulate the dough to uh, like whatever you like, right? So if I was doing a pizza, I would put less water in here and then do it in the mixer and then the dough will be more firm, not as like sticky and like fluffy, right? It'll be more of a, like an elastic and when you push down it'll pounce back up. 
Wow, Peter Barnett. Uh, so so right have... here, oh. so right here we have this awesome uh, cilantro lime sriracha hot sauce. So you can take some of that, and I'm just putting it on onto the chicken. Uh, use your your favorite kind of chicken strips or chicken tenders. Uh, anything homemade is really good as well. Uh, when I have more time, we usually do that. <laughs> I like a little hot stuff, so I'm going to add a little bit more. <laughs> and um, Paul, are these products all uh, indigenous or like owned by indigenous uh, entrepreneurs? Yeah, are like uh, the sriracha hot sauce is indigenous from Vancouver. Uh, the maple syrup is indigenous from back east. And then the World, World Winery just up the road a bit. And uh, the Mr. Bannock products from down here, right? <laughs> <laughs> so somebody so, had a question about doing Bannock in the oven. How, what temperature and how long do you cook it? So if you're doing Bannock in the oven, I would do... <clears throat> If I was doing a bannock pizza, I would make it kind of a bit thinner and then I would cook it uh, about 425 for like five minutes and then you're good. It's nice and thin, it'll be nice and crispy, right? So we just get these all nice, nicely coated. You can uh, definitely smell the the beautiful cilantro and uh, lime in that one. I would just go a couple more minutes. That's been probably about five minutes. And there was another great question, Paul, about how, and I'm curious too about this, how would you make this uh, at a campfire? How could you, what would you need in order to- Yeah, so if, if, I, if we were doing it at a campfire, I would add less water, but you would, yeah. uh, actually just have to knead it like you're making a, a baked bread okay <clears throat> you can probably just do it in the bag because uh it's been a whole learning experience but uh there's quite a bit of room in there right so you just add your water and then you can just mix it up and then it has to be like pliable like you can shape it okay. so you just take a little hunk out like you're doing uh like a dinner roll or something, right? And then you clean off a stick or whatever you're gonna use and then just burn the tip off. Like, and then uh, just shape it on the, on the stick. And then how long do you think you have to hold it over the, over the fire for? <laughs> yeah, so if you're doing, like when we did it, I'd made it a bit thinner. So probably just slowly rotate it for like four, four to five minutes. Oh, awesome. And yeah, and then uh, once it's nice and ready, like you can just break it off, but probably the first one's uh, a tester, right? <laughs> you just uh, test on the first one and make sure it's fully cooked and then your second one, you'll be good to go. But uh, one of our favorites is uh, you do like Nutella and some honey. I want to go camping. That's always yeah, my kids will want to go camping with you. Share it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, I remember when I was in uh, elementary school living on the North Shore here, we had a thing called outdoor school. And Bannock on a stick was one of the, the first things that, that I knew of. And it was just an awesome experience because they had the, the longhouse up in Squamish and then they actually had these uh, like cedar baskets, they were woven together and they heated up these really large rocks and they did uh, like a salmon soup on there. So that was, that was pretty amazing experience as well. <clears throat> so the second one is uh, the waffles with some fresh berries. Uh, we did, we started doing this awesome uh, strawberry compote on the food truck. 
and uh, that's going to go on on the waffles. Then we also do uh, like a float, a fresh strawberry float that has strawberry syrup, uh, ice cream, and a strawberry compote on there. So next would be the, the Wabanaki maple syrup. So you just drizzle a little bit on there. So this is your take on uh, waffles and chicken. Wow. Yeah, indigenous chicken and waffles. Oh. When I first started on the food truck, we did indigenous chicken and waffles, but I grabbed uh, chicken thighs and I put the Mr. Bannock smoke spice on there. And then we smoked it for about maybe eight hours like slow smoked on very low temperatures. That stuff was really delicious. And then just the finishing touch here, we have some whipped cream. Wow. How do you decide what to, what to, um, what to have on offer? I know you've got a special, I think every week, but how do you, how do you choose every week what you're, what you're gonna have at the food truck? Yeah, so like it just all depends what's available from from my suppliers as well, right? Uh, if they have any extra inventory that they want to get rid of stuff or like if they have a brand new product in, like I'll try it out. I'll get a, a smaller order of it and then uh, just, just bring my experience to the table. We did, uh, I worked that with a lot of other corporations before I started Mr. Bannock. I did a lot of Italian and Chinese uh, pizzas and pastas and everything, right? So just really mixing what I've learned with our ingredients, right? And our cooking methods. So again, just go a little bit with the Wabanaki maple syrup. So I've got a question. Do you mail your products out if if uh, someone wanted to order them? Yeah, we've been uh, we shipped across the country, and there's even some people that ordered uh, across down the border as well. Not very many, but uh, it's it's pretty cool. Like a lot of we've <clears throat> worked with a lot of different organizations the last like since the pandemic. So the word about Mr. Bannock's getting out there. And uh, yeah, so we have these to, to pair with them as well. So you can take your pick. There's the, the white wine or the red wine. Excellent. So when, um, when COVID hit, how did that impact your business? And, and then how did you have to pivot? Oh man, you make everything look so good. <laughs> yeah. yeah well it impacted business big time right because uh like i was saying pre-covid we were like all over the city right and not just the city but the whole lower mainland i guess and uh when it first started like people just started canceling and it was it was pretty scary right mm -hmm. and uh thanks to some help with from you guys and the government, like kind of helping out our indigenous tourism businesses. I was able to pivot and start making these uh, bannock kits and like different kind of non-perishable products, right? And you can get all of that stuff on the, on our website. <clears throat> so this is the, the smoke spice. Oh, nice. uh, I'm gonna be doing another free demo from Mr. from the Mr. Bannock social media. We're gonna be using the smoke spice soon, so stay tuned. And then the Bannock mixes, uh, we did some jam as well, and some candied salmon. Oh, wow. So just like really uh, showcasing our traditional ingredients, right? Yeah. This one has a, a hint of uh, sweet grass in there, and it's a wild blueberry compote. So it's uh it's pretty good. Like I had 
get to work with some of the the freshest stuff being in in Vancouver BC we have a ton of farms that are like half an hour 45 minutes away so definitely take advantage of that excellent I want to thank you so much uh first of all I love the fact that um you're partnering with other Indigenous uh, companies in terms of, of building your, your incredible food. I think everybody can share right now that they're all starving if they're not cooking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so thank you yeah. for that. <laughs> I also wanted I got to... some. Oh, <laughs> you got some extra. Yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say after we're done here, I got some cold brew coffee that I used from Spirit Bear. Oh, so I'm going to pour some of that with some of the, the maple syrup there later. <laughs> oh, somebody was just saying they use the syrup in their coffee. I thought, what a great idea. Thank you yeah, for the opportunity to visit your kitchen and hear about the great work that you're doing. And you're such an ambassador for Indigenous cuisine. Um, and it's it's one of those areas that is that people are just finding out about and how incredible and how diverse it is. When you think about Matt Bannock, um, you yeah. know, I mean, I'm old school and and I think about Bannock in one way, it's fried or it's baked, but uh, yeah. you've introduced some ways that uh, I'm, I'm sure my my aunties are going to go, what? What? What did he do? What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I can't well, wait. <laughs> I like to bug my mom because uh, like exactly what I do right now is I get to play with my food, right? <laughs> <laughs> And uh, she would be pretty furious about that when I was younger, right? <laughs> and one more thing, but it's, uh, I wanted to ask you, Paul, that so people who want to try your product, so you can download the app, right? Is that the best? And then I know you got, you deliver because I had yeah, I had to get the dishes, bring it to our house, so that's been really practical. But it, where are you going to be in the month of yeah. June? Are you going to be around? Do you think now that we're in step two? Yeah. Well. Well, we'll be at the food truck on Fridays and like we've been getting a ton of people asking about the Bannock mixes. So that's keeping us pretty busy. But like I was saying, I want to get everything in order to get the truck out and about again. So in the month of July, I'm hoping to be around the lower mainland and we'll pack a few of the mixes and these other products. So if you're near us or around us, hit us up. We got a lot of Indigenous businesses that need your support and uh, will feed your bellies for sure. <laughs> and again, thank you so much. I mean, it's just such a big part of our culture to share our and to feast. I mean, that's part of our hosting duties. And I love the fact that not only are you uh, feeding those hungry bellies down in the lower mainland, but you're also uh, teaching and sharing others across the country uh, about Bannock and, and providing access like nobody really knows how to cook it and with your Bannock kit which is very yeah. very simple um, they have the opportunity to experience it so I encourage anybody who has had the opportunity to try it right we should do a Bannock, uh, yeah. Bannock cooking contest <laughs> yeah let's do it that'll be awesome we uh I actually had a bunch of uh, schools that, that got in contact with me recently. Uh, my kid's school in Chilliwack asked for like a couple boxes of these and a couple other schools around the lower mainland. So I think it would be cool to, to link up and oh. then maybe donate a couple cases to a school or something and see what they can come up with, you know. That would be awesome. Good. Well, thank you so much. That uh, that looks amazing and delicious. So I think that uh, having this authentic, the opportunity to experience uh, this authentic food and having an, an expert such as yourself come and join us and, and talk about Bannock. And we have some really good questions um, coming from our viewers and, and thank you all for engaging. Now, now we're pleased to actually take you to the Okanagan's uh, sunny and picturesque um, Kelowna, BC, where we have um, Indigenous World Winery and the general manager and sommelier, I can't know, don't know if I said the word right, 
<laughs> we just called it the wine expert. Wine guy, <laughs> Ryan, that's Ryan right. went up to kind of join us. I wish we'll, you know what, Ryan, you're in Okanagan territory. I'm going to have to find a better word for you in Okanagan. I'll have to ask our elders because our elders, our language is very descriptive. And so when there's a new word that we have to replace, the elders usually come up with a very descriptive descriptive words so i'll have to ask them and maybe we'll give you your okanagan title here well so it's funny it's it's funny you say that because uh i was actually given a, a title a number of years ago at a naming ceremony here at indigenous world wine so i'm called the talker uh which is a, a fitting name for the role i fit here um it also translates to the translator or as I like to think of it as the spokesperson here at Indigenous World Winery. Uh, I'm very proud to be, uh, be here today um, speaking to all you folks at home uh, about Indigenous World Winery. It's the only 100% Indigenous owned winery in British Columbia. Um, we got our start way back. The inspiration really came from uh, Vancouver Olympics when uh, British Columbia Indigenous culture was was on the world stage and uh, the whole world got introduced to just the diversity of cultures and the richness of the culture here in British Columbia. We're, we're very fortunate and our owners Robert and Bernice Louis who are both of uh, Silk's descent were sitting on their back porch one day looking looking at the lake and thinking wouldn't it be great if we could bring people together in a, a warm environment and share a little bit of the culture we have here uh, in the interior. Um, and that's sort of where the concept of Indigenous World Winery started. Uh, wine is, is it's, a, it's a huge industry here, especially in the interior, um, but it's, it's very versatile and it's uh, in a very romantic sense, wine is a snapshot of a time and a place. Um, you think of the best wines in the world, you think of the limestone sand in Chablis, or you think of the eucalyptus soaked red sand in in uh, Coonawarra, Australia, or you think the, the sun-baked valleys in, in California, you can taste where those wines are from. And, and that, was, uh, that was a big inspiration. It's, uh, it was a way for, for us to be able to share um, the land that's nurtured the, the Silks people for thousands of years here. And, and, and grapes are an amazing vehicle for doing that. And so that's kind of where Indigenous World started. Um, they wanted, uh, Robert and Bernice really wanted to share some of the, the culture of the people here. I think a lot of people when they think of uh, Canadian and especially British Columbia Indigenous uh, culture, they think, a lot of them think, I think the, the, the cultures on the coast where you have these really beautiful, well-developed art forms, you think totem poles and you think, you know, the arts and the, the baskets and, and you get those really amazing, well-developed forms of arts in cultures where food is a little more plentiful, where people aren't struggling just to find shelter and food every day. Uh, and because it's a little warmer on the coast and food is very plentiful there, you have those things. Whereas in the interior, life is a little harder. And so while we do have some art here, um, it's mostly pictographs. And, and even the pictographs that still exist are, are protected um, because you know over the years, you know, some of them have been destroyed. And, and so we're very careful to protect them. Now, what we've done here at the winery is, is um, taken some of the pictographs and recreated them and worked them into our bar and our into our light fixtures and on the exterior of our building. And Incomy Winery down in Asoyas does an amazing job using some of that artwork with their labels. And so we decided to go a little bit of a different direction. And we're fortunate here that all the family members uh, in the family that owns the winery have names. Uh, and titles and so we sort of went the route of taking their names and titles and associating them to to wines and how the family sort of fits in and doing a little storytelling that way and so that's what I'm here today to do is to sort of walk you through some of the wines and some of the stories of the family and and um, and share a little bit about the winery so with that I think let's try some wine at home folks no. so we're going to start you here the first one I've got for you folks today and I hope you can see this okay the light's not glinting off it too bad. This is Quenem Quenem. Uh, and this is named after the owner's daughter, Cassina. Now, Cassina lives in Ontario at the moment, or Quebec at the moment, and she has an Assiniboine name, and she was given the name Hummingbird. She has a name here in the Okanagan as well, Squeaks them, which translates to the flowering part of a rosehip bush. And so um, her, she was a very busy young girl, and her work ethic and and uh, dedication was really an inspiration 
in the, the formative years here at Indigenous World Winery. And so we thought of using her name as a way to sort of share um, those actions and, and that work ethic was a great way. And so we translated her Assiniboine name to Silks, uh, which is Fwenem, Fwenem, meaning, meaning hummingbird. And if you look on the label here, you can see a hummingbird flying up to a rose hip, and that's meant to represent Casina. Now, the winery here really started back in 2013 with the planting of a vineyard. We planted Muscat grapes. Um, a lot of people think of Muscat as sweet wine, um, like Moscato, but it's actually a very versatile grape. And they think, the grape scientists think that really it's the original wine grape, the indigenous grape, and that all other wine grapes are descendants, the children and grandchildren of Muscat. And it originated in Kazakhstan of all places, moved through the Middle East where you got mutations and different varietals and into Europe where, uh, where it is now. But it's, it's great, it grows great in cool climates. Uh, you find it a lot on the East Coast, um, even like Pennsylvania and New York, uh, middle of the, the United States, Minnesota, Ohio. You find it quite a bit here in British Columbia, especially on Vancouver Island. And because we're located in West Kelowna, where it is a little cooler than it is, say, further down south in Oliver and Soyuz, where it's about two degrees warmer every single day of the year, better for white grapes. And so we decided we would grow muscat here. Uh, for the first couple of years, while the vineyard was maturing, we just did a still grape uh, wine from it. And in 2019, it was a bit of a cooler year, lots of acidity, great wine for making, or great grapes for making sparkling wine. And so we, made a transition to using the muscat grapes that we grew here on the property in the sparkling wine and it was absolutely amazing like fresh and fruity and lots of acidity and just absolutely dynamite and so uh the huenem huenem we've got from 2019 that we're going to try today is uh is made from the muscat grapes grown here at the property um so let's give that a little try and we'll talk a little bit about more about muscat so muscat is interesting in that um not only is it a wine grape but it's also a table grape and it's got a really cool property in that when you make wine from grapes, you don't usually taste grapes afterwards. You taste cherries or berries or vanilla or other fruits, but Muscat, especially a little bit sweeter, has this beautiful characteristic of being grapey. Uh, and so uh -huh. even on the nose, you get this beautiful, like fresh table grapes, maybe a little bit of nectarines, a little orange and we do do this sparkling wine a little on the sweeter side so I, I recommend pools or something a little sweeter to go with it like this beautiful apple spice bannock I got from Kukuli Cafe here in West Kelowna as well. I was going to ask you whether that wine went well with bannock so thank you for answering. Oh the have I got some bannocks for you guys to try here today. I also All right let's move along to the next wine so the next one is uh, named after the youngest daughter in the Louis family, and that is Lep Cheat. Now, Cassandra is a very sparkly, shiny, exuberant, happy person. And, uh, and as someone with that kind of personality, I, we all think marketing people. And actually, Cassandra has been involved in the marketing program here uh, for a number of years. Uh, before even I started, she was doing tastings and really trying to get the brand out there. Um, and her traditional name is Lep Cheat, and that translates to the shimmer of the sunlight on a river spillway. And so we sort of got a picture of that where the river, the sh shiny river beside the vineyard here on the bottle. Um, I just think it's amazing that English being a huge language, we have more words than any other language and it's very descriptive, yet we don't have a word that means the shimmer of the sunlight on a river spillway. And I think that really speaks to the importance of nature and the characteristics of nature in indigenous cultures and that that they took the time and that something developed out of that characteristic in nature uh, that there's a word for it and um, how it sort of applies to people and and it was just I don't know I just thought it was the neatest thing uh, when I found that out um, and so this is a rosé sparkling that we've got here today a little bit of a different character than we have with the white this is much drier a little earthier uh, and so I think charcuterie when I think this sparkling rosé. So a little bit of plum, a little forest floor, you know, gets me wanting meat and cheese or maybe some nice cheese and onion bannock here we have from Kukuli Cafe. It's an amazing, amazing pairing, guys. 
<laughs> I love your hats off to Kukuli Cafe. Um, I, we've been asked a question. I mean, first of all, there's two questions that I thought were funny. Somebody asked for your name to be written down, and I thought, I hope they don't mean the Okanagan name. <laughs> It's in my email signature. I would and make even you I spell it. <laughs> I can't draw some of the characters that are in it. Uh, and I, even one. then, I don't think I pronounce it entirely correctly. Um, and you that's the trick that. with doing this language preservation is we we do sort of phonetic spelling on all the bottles because if we wrote it the way it's actually spelled, people would look at it like they well, it is another language, but they're like, I don't I don't know what how do you even start to say that? So so we've tried to make it easier on people. And even then. I mean, we have staff that have, that have worked here for a number of years and Quenem, Quenem still doesn't quite roll off the tongue for those people. <laughs> yeah, totally. I totally understand it. We don't have an easy language, but it is beautiful and very descriptive. So mm -hmm. we have a question on whether you, or not you offer virtual tastings for residents outside of the province or the country. It's a great question. We haven't done any. Actually, this is the first virtual tasting I've done since uh, since well, since ever, since we've been doing the pandemic. Um, we were very fortunate last year in that where we are, uh, our location, we have a huge wraparound patio, so you can really enjoy the view of the lake. And we did outside tastings last year because we had space. So we, uh, um, I know a lot of wineries struggled just, um, you know, social distancing and keeping people safe. We were lucky in that we've got this beautiful big outdoor space that we can keep people social distance. And so we had our hands full the entire time just with the number of people that still visited us last summer that we, we never did end up transitioning to doing virtual tastings. But that is, is a great question. I have seen uh, a number of wineries have done that. Um, and yeah, it just was something we didn't, we didn't do. Though that, that being said, I will mention that all of our wines, um, I know when you folks at home, you pick up a bottle of wine at the liquor store and you read it, or your favorite wine shop, lots of times it's not descriptive or it, it never changes. We do change the notes on the back of our bottles every year. So the tasting notes and how it's made uh, on the back labels are reflective of that specific wine for that vintage every year. So we do go through the, the time and effort to make sure that when you're picking up a bottle of wine, you know what you're getting, what it's gonna be like uh, before, you pick, before you take it home, so. Ryan, I have a question about, about finding the wine. I went to uh, two different liquor stores and I see one of the questions about that as well. And there was one bottle um, and uh, there was lots of ink and meat ones, but, yeah. uh, but only one of yours. So, and that was at the BC liquor store. And so I'm just wondering how can, we're all tempted and I think, um, you know, appreciating the, the wine that you're sharing here today. Uh, can we, is there direct ordering? Are there other mechanisms that people, how people can find the wine? Yeah, and that's a great question. So we, we still do qualify as a small winery. Um, we produce eight to 10,000 cases of wine a year, which is getting closer to a medium sized winery. Uh, the BC Liquor Stores is the second largest liquor buying company in the entire world next to the Ontario Liquor Board. Uh, and so because of the volumes you sort of require, we have trouble meeting the minimum sort of amounts of wines. And so you'll find us at almost every private liquor store throughout the province. We um, just not at many of the government stores. We only have one wine at just the signature stores. We do ship almost everywhere in Canada with the exception of Ontario where uh, interprovincial shipping from um, from liquor manufacturers isn't prohibited. Um, and we do offer, Thirstina Sellers Wine Club, we do offer 15% discount uh, on all purchases and free shipping in British Columbia and discounted shipping throughout the rest of the country as well. So um, lots of places to find it, especially because we do produce about 20 different wines a year. Really, there's only five or six that we do a lot of. Uh, some of the more specialty boutique style wines that we produce are a lot harder to find. Uh, and so I do recommend um, checking us out on our website at www.indigenousworldwinery.com. Uh, you'll see our spirits on there as well, which maybe we'll touch on at the end, but uh, yeah. Thank you. All right, you guys ready to try some red wine now? Yes. All right, so the next one is everybody's favorite for a number of reasons. It is the most popular wine we make. It is the wine that you probably found at your government liquor store and that is Hee Hee Telkin. And Hee Hee Telkin, it's a little tougher to see there. Um, is we do a red and a white of the same name. And so where that name comes from, that's the, the owner's son, Trent. And he was 15 when they started planting the vineyard here back in 2013. And he was helping doing the farming, doing the laboring in the vineyard, digging holes, string and trellis planting vines and our, our winemaker Jason Parks thought so much of, of his hard work and dedication that 
that year he took him under his wing and brought him into the cellar and started teaching him a little bit about you know winemaking and what it, what it is to work in a cellar now at the age of 15 that mostly involves cleaning tanks and scrubbing floors uh, but for the last eight years, Trenton has been involved with the vineyard and the production uh, and is on his way to being a winemaker. Uh, so 2016, when we first opened, we needed a name for our blends. And like all wineries, everybody has a proprietary name for their blends. We are no different. But to honor Trenton for his efforts working in the cellar and working in the vineyards, we decided to name the blends after him. And so his, um, his name translates, he he talking translates to elusive high country stag with large antlers. It's weird that he he talking is easier to say than what it means. Um, and if you look at the label here, you'll see a, a stag standing on its hind legs. Maybe move it over here with, at an old fashioned, no, that's worse, at an old fashioned barrel press. Uh, and the stag's looking off to the side here, and that's meant to represent Trenton learning how to make wine, looking off to the side to our winemaker for guidance. Um, and if Trenton continues on this road and takes over as the winemaker, the stag on the bottle will then turn to face you to signify that he's now looking towards the future and has taken ownership of making wines. And, and that story is everybody's favorite story. And I mean everybody. When people come to the winery to, to bring in their friends and family for the first time, before we can even start pouring wines, right? Tell them the hee hee talking story. Tell them the hee hee talking story. And I think it's it's amazing that uh, you know these indigenous cultures that are you know it's entirely based on oral traditions. That even us telling that story about Trenton, that that story resonates so well with people, uh, and that it's it's a really neat way to see how you know these stories that that people have carried on for thousands of years how they still resonate today and they still get people excited and and how those stories kind of carry on the wine itself uh the red is always a cabernet merlot blend the white is always a light dry uh gewürztraminer blend uh and there are everyday wines there you know we've got friends and family coming over where they like something fruity or they like something structured this is going to be the wine for them um Again, we are terroir driven. And so 2018, we did have a fair amount of forest fires here in the Okanagan. And so some of the wines were smoky. And rather than try and clean it up and take that out of it, we, again, we wanted a snapshot of a time and a place. So we left it alone and, and left those characteristics in there. And so you do get, it is a bit smoky, uh, great with sort of barbecue kind of foods. Uh, it does have a little bit of that earthiness and fruitiness. I think it would be great with these cinnamon sugar bannock bites. Anybody? Dynamite. <laughs> All right, last one. So this is Simu. So Simu is the uh, was the name that was given to our owner Robert Louis. Now Robert uh, has been involved. Um, here in local government, who is in local government as a uh, first a council member and then a uh, chief for uh, a total of 23 years, worked in Ottawa for the Lands Advisory Board and that started very involved with his, his people, very proud of his community and, and did a lot he could do. Um, and when he started the winery, he wanted to put his name on a bottle of wine and he wanted it to be the best wine that we had. Um, and so that's sort of how CMU started. Um, to put it in perspective, as I mentioned, we make about eight to 10,000 cases of wine a year make about 200 cases of Simu. So two, the best 2% of our grapes get selected for this wine. Uh, and Simu, for those of you at home wondering, means connected to the land. And I think there's a really neat duality in that, in that, you know, indigenous people, that's what we think. We think their connection to nature, the stewardship of the land, that connection uh, to the land. But in the wine world, that's what terroir is. That's a huge important part of wine, is that connection of the grape to the land and that expression of the grape in the wine and so really needs duality uh, in the meaning there and so like i said this is our signature or sorry our flagship wine this is the best thing we do the current vintage that we've got out right now is 2016 so that was the best grapes from 2016 then spent four years in all new french oak barrels then bottled and laid it down to rest again for another six months uh, making sure that it is of the best quality imaginable um, this just came out three weeks ago, so just in time for Indigenous History Month here. Uh, brand new release for us, and um, it's our most accoladed wine. It's the, the best thing we make. So, um, you know, sort of a special occasion kind of wine. Um, let's give it a little try here. Now, when you get these big Bordeaux wines, and by that I mean the Cabernet Merlots, the Cab Sauv, Cab Franc Merlot blends, 
a lot of people think, you know, a big wine needs steak, something big and meaty. And you could certainly go that way with this guy. You know, it's got some stewed fruit notes and a little bit of earthiness and spice. But honestly, when I have these nice big red wines, I like something a little sweet. There's a little princess that lives in my tummy. I call her Princess Ryanetta, and she likes sweet things. And so this big red wine, if you have something a little bit fruity, like I like dessert, you know, I think some nice cheese and some fruit, uh, some berries, maybe some Saskatoon berry bannock, anybody? It would be an amazing pairing. Something with a little bit of acidity and freshness it would just be a dynamite pairing to go with this wine. And that's my lineup today, folks. Oh, my goodness. I love, first of all, I want to say, um, when you first poured out that little bit of tasting wine that you had, um, it just blew up the lines. They're like, what's he doing? He's pouring <laughs> Uh, second for your virtual, your first virtual uh, tasting, amazing job. I mean, Thank I you. love uh, the thing that I absolutely love about uh, your winery is that um, you know, I mean, that that connection between the grapes and the land and the culture and the history and the family is exactly what indigenous products are. What's what they stand for, and that it's not. That's what separates. Indigenous tourism and Indigenous products from other products is that that storytelling and that history and, and Ryan you did an amazing job. Oh, thank you very um, much. Giving us that that history and I also love the fact that the wines are named after the family members and there's real meaning that's attached to the type of wine that is. So um, amazing, absolutely but amazing. I've got one more for you if we're going to finish. We're not going to do wine but one more little language piece. So we have something we like to say here when we're when we're saying people goodbye, uh, when we're doing a little cheers to your health, and that is um, we've got it on our entry mat, so you can see it when you're coming and going, and that's husk spahus. So if your spahus spahusa, that's your center, your heart, your 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 being, uh, and husk means um, happy, you're healthy, you're warm. And so I like to just wish everybody at home there a nice husk spahus. Uh, uh, a good heart or a happy self or, or good being. So hust for who's everybody. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, but there's some questions. I was wondering the same thing about the art on the, uh, on the bottles themselves. Is that, uh, is, that a, is that a single artist? Is that a collection of artists? Is there a story? Yeah, the art, uh, the, the wine labels themselves are done by um, a wine label artist out of California. Um, he does uh, especially a woodcut style art so we wanted that more sort of traditional older style artwork the animals on the labels are animals that have sort of a connection to um, the silks people so the pakelkin which is the bald eagle um, the grizzly bear kilona uh, we use on our red wines um, the sparkling wines we created their own labels just because of the name and same with um, with hihi telkin um, we do have another sparkling wine that works that's named after Bernice Louis, which is, um, um, oh, um, oh, I forgot the name already, but it means mother grizzly bear protector, and it's uh, a, a grizzly bear with three cubs on it to sort of represent um, Bernice and her three children that are, she's looking after. Um, yeah, um, and then, but we get into sort of more indigenous art. Uh, I'm, I'm doing this tasting here from our about to open new spirits bar. So as I mentioned earlier, we have been making uh, spirits since 2017, just released our first product last year uh, and just released our first whiskey, which is the primary focus for us um, about three weeks ago. And so we're opening a tasting room here underneath the, the wine tasting room. It's gonna open this Thursday. Um, as sort of a wine and cocktail bar and a place to try the spirits and the branding for that is based on the four food chiefs of the Okanagan which is I think Brenda can uh, attest to is everybody's favorite story in the culture about um, black bear and salmon and uh, bitter roots and sea berry um, giving themselves the, the first people giving themselves to support uh, the new people and so we found a local artist who does sort of a hybrid uh, style where it's high definition graphite uh, art with uh, he sort of merges that with the traditional tribal sort of coastal style mm -hmm. art um, but it's a gentleman based here in West Kelowna and so we wanted to you know in a small way share this the, the favorite story of the of the children and uh, the people of, of, of the Seals territories here as well so um, something really fun to look forward to in the future as well or if you're visiting Kelowna 
Um, you can check out the wine tasting room upstairs if your wine's not your thing and you're more into cocktails and spirits, come visit us downstairs. We'll have a little charcuterie program and a chance to enjoy the, the patio as well. I love that. So um, you've got a new line of spirits coming out then uh, starting this Thursday? Yeah, so the vodka came out last April um, and then we brought out a gin using some uh, local forage botanicals in September and then a whiskey came out a couple of weeks ago and so we finally have a place for people to come try them. It, it, some of the spirits are available at a few select uh, private liquor stores throughout the province um, but as we, we grow and, and have new things you'll start to see us a little bit more there as well. So we had a question, is the restaurant, uh, are you going to be offering food services in the near future? Yeah, so our restaurant partners from the previous five years, Red Fox Club, who were um, an amazing partner. Um, they were one of the top farm to table restaurants in BC and, and she, uh, Chef Andrea Callan specialized in um, indigenous culinary experiences. Um, they left last year with COVID and so we've opened up uh, in their space, the tasting room. We are going to do limited food service this year. So as I mentioned, a charcuterie program, uh, something pretty simple. We're hoping to add bannock or fry bread into that um, in the very near future. Um, with the uncertainty of COVID, it was, you know, things were up in the air and we didn't even know if we'd have travelers this year. So we didn't go too far into it. Uh, we are looking at doing something more full service as a restaurant, maybe in the, in the coming years and, and partnering with uh, um, again, some indigenous inspired cuisine with some of the local chefs, but that's still a little bit up in the air. But uh, yeah, the space is currently going to be, you know, like a cocktail bar, wine bar, with a little bit of charcuterie offerings um, for this year anyway. I love the um, I love the stories that you told us about each wine. I mean, certainly having wine with friends is always a, a wonderful experience, but it's even better when you've got the story and the context behind it that connection to the land and connection to the family. And the fact that you change your labels annually, like you were talking about the wine that really had the smoky uh, after notes to it. And instead of, and it's a very indigenous value and principle as stewards of, of the land to not try and change the characteristic <laughs> of those grapes and just exactly. embrace them and create the best product that you can, which is really respecting Mother Earth. And yeah. the fact that, um, you know, that you were talking about uh, bear and salmon and, and um, that that's our creation story in the Okanagan. And so that's probably one of the most important stories to us that we tell our children about how people arrived on on earth here and that the animals mm -hmm. and the land and mother earth gave up herself and and they all gave up their lives so that we could continue to thrive and so that that becomes a message of respect and hope that we bring to our kids and that that we continue to um bring forward as stewards so you did an excellent job ryan thank you thank so you very much, much. Thank you. Um, I, it, does anybody have any final questions for either Ryan, uh, for either Ryan or Paul? Uh, so there's a question here. Will would we be able to get a list of the pairings? Like what goes, what food goes well with which wine? Aside from Bannock, everything goes well with Bannock. Everything goes good or bad. Uh, yeah, we can we can definitely get that posted uh, to the site later on today for sure. And somebody would love to hear a little bit more about the whiskey and spirits. Oh, um, so the distillery started back in 2017. Um, it's a grain-based whiskey, um, so 100% barley. So if we're talking styles very similar to, say, an Irish-style whiskey. Uh, we have... Um, we're using, rather than a pot still, a hybrid still, so a combination column and pot. Uh, it's all the whiskey from the current release is aged in ex-port barrels and ex-cognac barrels. So it's a sort of a lighter, fruitier style whiskey. Think um, Glen Morangie or Glen Morangie La Santa, if you're sort of trying to have something to compare it to. Uh, I think it's just great in old fashions and Manhattans. Uh, it's a, you know, a great entry level point for people who aren't sure if they like whiskey. It, it's very approachable, uh, a little bit on the younger side, but uh, just 
absolute beautiful cocktail and sell whiskey. So yeah, you can look for that. You're starting to see it out there um, a little bit more. Like I said, we just came out a couple of weeks ago, but if you, again, if you visit our website at indigenousworldwinery.com, you can snag a bottle off there as well. Excellent. Thank you. I wanted to say thank you uh, both to you, Ryan, and to you, Paul. I mean, it's been an incredible presentation. Uh, you both uh, made us both hungry and thirsty. And, uh, and that's, man, I mean, that's the greatest gift in the world. And, and just for your stories and your connection, and again, the importance of uh, us as Indigenous people and, and the importance of, you know, food and beverage when it comes to our hosting responsibilities and the sharing. And for all of you that joined us, thank you so much for joining us. I think that this is a great way to celebrate Indigenous uh, People's Month and the more that you learn and, and the more amazing uh, experiences that you have. And you all have a, a responsibility to be witnesses and, and leave these presentations and talk about what you've learned today and what you've experienced. So thank you so much, Maya. Yeah, I just want to echo my thanks as well. And uh, it is, it's been a great experience to, uh, to order from the food truck and I look forward to uh, ordering some of the Bannock products. So I appreciate uh, that uh, both Paul and Ryan shared how we can purchase our products from home and or go to the food truck or go to the winery and experience it uh, uh, ourselves uh, directly. So appreciate that.